Hola amigos, hey, yo soy Rory Foster. Hoy es viernes and I'm happy to be uh, sharing another lesson with you today. This is my second lesson from Costa Rica this time, this trip, uh, and my last one for this trip. Next time it'll be um, in June in, in Ecuador and then late June, early July in Costa Rica otra vez. Anyway, uh, nosotros esta semana Nosotros estamos trabajando con una clínica que tiene varios proyectos en la comunidad. So this week we were working with a clinic that has a handful of community projects in the community that surrounds uh, the clinic area. It's an underserved area. And we prepared and gave a coronavirus workshop this week. And we just finished uh, earlier this morning, and it was awesome. It was uh, it was a great it was a great workshop. Uh, about 20 or so folks from the community joined us, and we went through, you know, what is the coronavirus? What are the signs and symptoms? And when is it important to get medical help? And um, you know, talking all about prevention, uh, transmission, and uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, it was a great workshop. The group did super super well uh, with their Spanish and pulling together, you know, a, a scary topic and and a topic that's really catching on a lot of uh, you know media frenzy and putting it into real world uh, common sense terms for community folks. So anyway, I was really proud really proud of them. The other day, I was sitting on the couch with Danny, one of the medical students on the program right now, and you know, I was just kind of doing a little check-in with him. It was a little bit before class, and he said, "You know, I'm doing pretty well, I'm learning lots of vocab, but I feel like every time I say something, uh, I get corrected, and it's the same words, it's just in a different order." And how do you get used to? the new word order in Spanish. Or Rory, what was your strategy when you were learning Spanish to get the word order down just right? And, and immediately this sort of image came to mind where we've got things, uh, we like to package things nice and neat and have them all very orderly. And then as soon as you start to say it in Spanish, it becomes this just like jumbled word salad. And you're like, what the heck? How, how am I supposed to know uh, what order to put these things in? Maybe you feel like that, and if you do, this lesson is exactly for you. So I wanted to share, and I talked with Danny uh, about cuatro casos específicos en que cambiamos el orden de palabras en español para poder sonar normal, so that we can sound normal. We change the word order in Spanish in four particular instances or situations. So, los cuatro casos específicos son, son primero cuando formamos preguntas. And actually, I'm going to show you that this is the same in English too, So, it's, but we just don't think about it too much. Adjetivos que modifican sustantivos. So, uh, when we use adjectives to modify nouns, word order is going to change. Pronombres del complemento indirecto and directo. And by now I've probably lost you. You're like, Rory, this is too much nerd speak, grammar nerd speak. Uh, but these are direct and indirect object pronouns. I'm going to share some examples with you and uh, you'll get it. Now, if you're a beginner, beginner, please don't worry about this. But if you have been around Spanish for a little bit and you know about the lows and the lays and that sort of thing, then you're going to understand what I'm saying. And finalmente, sustantivos que funcionan como adjetivos. So we've got some nouns in English that focus like, or that, that serve as adjectives for other nouns. And we'll look at some examples. And when we do that in Spanish, we just have to separate them and uh, flip them around and add a day in there. And so let's jump into unos ejemplos. Cuando formamos preguntas. So first of all, in frase, normal phrase speech, we've got subject first and then the verb. So por ejemplo, usted tiene dolor. So you have pain, yeah? And ella es vegetariana. This is exactly the way we do it in English too. This word order is perfect, okay? Uh, what we don't realize is that oftentimes when we ask questions in English, we flip it, okay? And so pregunta, becomes verb and then subject. And so, uh, tiene usted dolor? And essentially, we're now saying verb first, and then you, and then pain. So, do you have pain? And in English, we sort of do a combo of that. 
A lot of times with questions, we use a helping verb, are or do or have. Um, and so in Espanol, we don't have those helping verbs. All we do is we switch the subject and the verb. So the verb comes first and then the subject. But in English, this would be, do you have pain? And so we still have you have, so that is normal. But then we throw in an extra verb in there uh, at the front to say, do you have pain? Okay, bien. And then, ella es vegetariana? Essentially, in English, we would say, is she vegetarian? And so in this case, the, we do have the verb first, is she vegetarian? That's exactly uh, how you would ask the question in Spanish. Now, to be fair, you could turn this word order into a question just with the intonation of your voice. You could say, ¿Usted tiene dolor? And it would make perfect sense as a question. ¿Ella es vegetariana? And that makes perfect sense as a question. However, one thing you often hear, and it really doesn't matter how you speak, it's what other people are saying to you and making sure that you understand, you comprehend, etc. Uh, so, ¿Tiene usted dolor? is a very common way to ask the question. ¿Ella es vegetariana? Uh, or, ¿Es ella vegetariana? So, with the verb first, then the subject. So, this is one scenario in which the subject verb gets twisted around and sometimes it's the exact same in English like this one is she vegetarian or here we add a helping verb do you have pain okay another one a little more clear cut adjetivos adjetivos in espanol in English we say adjetivo and then noun so we use adjective first and then our sustantivo or our noun so por ejemplo public hospital. In this case, public is the adjective, hospital is the noun. CT, computerized tomography, yeah? NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. All that stuff modifies the kind of drug we're talking about, okay? So you can see how all those, um, all these words up front are adjectives, adjective, then noun, noun, okay? Continuamos, CPR. Okay, uh, resuscitation is the uh, is the noun we're talking about. It's cardiopulmonary. Uh, <laughs> I'm mixing up my uh, English resuscitation. Okay, ectopic pregnancy. So pregnancy is what we're modifying. Ectopic is the adjective to say pregnancy. En español, it's switched. It's the noun then the adjective. So por ejemplo. Hospital público, hospital public. Tomografía computarizada. Antiinflamatorios no esteroides. Okay? Antiinflamatorios no esteroides. <coughs> Resucitación cardiopulmonar. Embarazo ectópico. And so, in all of these cases, we've got the noun first and then the adjective second. So that's otro caso in which cambiamos el orden de palabras en, uh, en español. El otro caso, otro caso es pronombres del complemento directo and indirecto. And so this is where I was saying, if you have understood and heard low and lay and you kind of have a somewhat of a grasp of those things, then this is going to make perfect sense. If you're a beginner, you can just kind of skip over this section. Okay. So in English, our typical setup is to say subject, verb, and then we add our objects. So let's look at some examples. She gives me it, right? So subject, verb, and we have two objects here. The indirect, me, it's happening to me, and the direct is what she's giving, okay? <clears throat> he examines us. Uh, he examines us, subject, verb, direct object. It's what he's examining, us. Pero en español es diferente. En español, the subject still comes first, but then the objects come before the verb. This is possibly one of the more trickier ones because you just don't, you know, when you're thinking in English and putting it into Spanish, you want to say me, it at the end of your verb uh, or us at the end of your verb in Spanish, but you have to like think fast enough to think all the way through the sentence and then bring the us forward. Uh, so let's, here's what it would look like. Ella 
me lo da. So she gives it to me is how we do it. Uh, and so it's un orden uh, un poco complicado. And then el examina and the nos is in between. So el nos examina. So he us examines. She, me, it gives. <laughs> I mean, you don't think like that in English, and so and and when you're speaking Espanol, what you have to you have to you think of the whole frase, and you're like, oh yeah, I got to change this word order around. Ella me lo da because the objects come before the verb in Espanol. Okay, y finalmente el último caso is sustantivos que funcionan como adjetivos. So subjects that serve as, excuse me, not subjects, nouns that serve as adjectives. Uh, here's an example. In English, podemos usar dos sustantivos juntos. We can use two uh, nouns together, and one becomes more of like a modifying noun or an adjective-y type noun. Here's some examples. So you can take beer and bottle and make it a beer bottle, yeah? Two different nouns become an adjective-y type uh, and then a noun. Yeah, a beer bottle. It's not just any kind of bottle, it's a beer bottle, okay? Uh, interpreter phone. So we've got an interpreter plus phone becomes interpreter phone. These are two self-standing nouns that interpreter now becomes adjectivish, right? Uh, bien. Well, in Espanol, we can't do it that way. In Espanol, what we have to do is we have to separarlos por de and flip the order. So. Uh, we can't say cerveza botella. We have to say botella de cerveza, okay? A uh, bottle of beer. And we can't say interpretes telefono. We have to say telefono de interpretes, okay? So telephone of interpreters. So <clears throat> those are four instances in which we mix up the word order in Espanol in order to have normal syntax of the sentence. And so as soon as I explained those to Danny, he says, well, all right, you can tell me that, but how am I really going to grasp it? How am I going to get it? And um, so, como estar más cómodo? How am I going to get more comfortable with this? And I said, well, really, us language nerds, we talk about something really important. We talk about comprehensible input. And I said, well, what you need, lo que necesitas input comprensible. Comprensible, you need comprehensible input. You, there's a theory of language learning that the more language you consume in Spanish, the more comfortable you get with the Spanish. I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? It's not rocket science. I mean, people like me can think of this stuff. So, uh, donde and como do you do this? So how do you get this comprehensible input? Well, step number one is leer mas, read more in Spanish. So read more in Spanish and what I suggest is, and my specific suggestion to Danny was, uh, find something that you're already very familiar with in English and read it in Spanish. Maybe it's a book you already read in English. Maybe it's a series of books that you totally love and that you know the storyline so, uh, and you have the general idea so you won't be trying to learn something new in Spanish. You won't be trying to follow uh, an unknown story in Spanish because you won't enjoy it. You'll spend 90% of your time in the dictionary and that's just not a good way to read. But if you choose something that you're already very familiar with, then you read about it in Spanish, then you just start picking up things and recognizing things and you relax on a content level and you're able to observe and focus and enjoy seeing how the grammar and the syntax comes together uh, when it's written by someone who speaks Spanish. Um, one of the best ways for you, if you have a laser focus on really improving your medical Spanish, one of the best ways for you to get reading materials is to go to Medline Plus. It's a website and, and for pretty much every article that Medline Plus puts out and they put out stuff that's like a consumer level um, writing and so I could go and learn about 
common signs and symptoms of diabetes or, or whatever uh, on Medline Plus, and it would make sense to me not being a healthcare professional. And so it's everyday uh, layperson language. And so what they've done is they've translated nearly all their content into Spanish. So, you know, if you're thinking about the kinds of patients you work with on a day in and day out basis, maybe you focus on some of those conditions or some of those scenarios or some of those disease states or whatever. And you look those up in Medline Plus in Spanish, and then you have some reading material. It'd be like a page or two of content that you can read about and really see how the medical Spanish is coming together. Not only word order or syntax, but also vocabulary that's used and things like that. So I think that's a great use of your time and energy. Secondly, uh, via Harmas, <laughs> travel more because this immersion model that I'm on right now really, really does work because you surround yourself. You know, you think of just grab your knees and jump into the sp- swimming pool, cannonball style. You completely surround yourself with, with Spanish and there's no escape. And, and that's a really good way for you to uh, just be learning 24 seven. Plus, I mean, not to mention the fact that you eliminate other distractions in life and you're really just able to focus on, on your main purpose of working on your Spanish. So anyway, speaking of travel, ¿Alguna vez ha pensado en immersión? Have you, have, you, have you thought about immersion? I would love to work directly with you. Our next program is gonna be mid-June in uh, Ecuador. We'll be there for a couple weeks. And then toward the end of June and through the month of July, we'll be in Costa Rica. And we'll have programs for families, programs for healthcare, programs for teachers, and programs for high school kids. And so uh, regardless of your situation and your scenario, there should be an opportunity for you to uh, be a part of it if you want to be on a really high quality Spanish immersion program. All right, well, that's it for today. Gracias por aprender español conmigo. Juntos mejoramos comunidades. Really together, we're able to, as we improve our Spanish, we're able to improve uh, communities and uh, the kinds of attention people get um, that struggle with their English. So para más español, head over to Common Ground International and uh, we'll see you next week. Ciao.